everybody, Journeyman Joe here. Today we're going to put to, to put together a fill extruder. What the hell is a fill extruder? Well, it makes, uh, you take filament chunks and you make new filament out of it. If you don't know what any of that is, it's 3D printer crap. Okay, first thing you do is you open up the box and you take a look at this nice little form here. And it'll tell you where to get the instructions and uh, the community form if you need help and all that crap. So let's get going! Now that I used the link in the uh, piece of paper that was included, I printed out the instructions to PDF. 11 pages, not too bad, so let's take a look. First, there's some uh, cautions and warnings. You will burn down your house and kill yourself if you use this, not too bad. Okay, next, what we're gonna do is gonna look through all the different parts and I'll lay them all out for you and make sure that we got everything. Okay, here we go. Everything comes well packed in the box. I don't know what all this stuff is, so let's try to muddle through it. Looks like one of the bags got torn open during transport. All the loose nuts and bolts are down here. We're gonna have to uh, go through and make sure that they're all here. So, uh, good thing every single nut and screw is uh, located on the sheet. Okay, here we go. So, in order, the first thing we got is the 8-inch barrel and flange assembly. Half-inch pipe coupler. One shaft collar. One thrust bearing. 7 16 tech socket. Husky brand, ooh, the very best from Home Depot. Two gray PVC washers. Four quarter inch 20 1.5 inch bolts. Four quarter inch hex nuts. Four quarter inch washers. Six M5 40 millimeter motor mount bolts. Four M5 100 millimeter bolts. Four M5 nuts. Two M3 by 10 stall protection board bolts. 12 6 seconds, seven eighths length screws. 12 6 nuts. PTFT tube filament guide. Two zip ties. Now let's move on to the electric bag. K-type thermocoupler. 260 millimeter fans that come wrapped in a uh, piece of paper that looks like it's a copier machine that's running out of ink from the uh, electrical instructions. Five female spade terminals in two different sizes, I guess. Two rocker switches. Heater band. A pair of grommets. 18 inches of uh, 18 gauge wire uh, in red and black, I guess. 11 inch long cable with female DC jack. Now let's move on to the not bag stuff. First we got the insulation. The auger feed screw. What's funny about this is that it's actually a five 5 8 bit and a real uh, auger feed screw actually usually has a progressive threading that goes uh, so by the end it's all nice and narrow and at the end it's wide. Of course that costs us thousands of dollars which is why I end up using just a uh, you know a nice cheap uh, regular bit. In the bag we have the laser cut enclosure including 12 spacers, remove masking tape protection, aluminum chassis, 12 volt power supply, power cord, stall protection board, 12 volt gear motor, temperature PID controller, brass plug and nozzle and the clip and it's all so uh, this will be drilled out to whatever you specified when you ordered it. One last category is the user provided parts. Now this is, uh, they provide an STL file of what you gotta print up. If you can't print it up, you can buy it online for 10 bucks. Here's what it looks like. This is the hopper, so you could uh, screw a bottle in there and then uh, feed it. Not too bad of a print, so yeah, either way, you need that. Mysterious extra hardware. A pound of virgin ABS. Step one, put the color on the auger bit and slide it down until it, uh, until it hits the little raised part there, then tighten it down with a, uh, the, uh, 916 Salon key. Check this distance, it should be 79 to 82 millimeters, if not, contact support! Assemble the thrust bearing, use two of those washers in the green bag that I didn't know before, and put them, uh, assemble them like this, and then slide it on. Use a dopper, a little bit of oil or grease to prevent corrosion. So now that you have your, uh, thrust bearing sandwich on there, put on one of the gray PVC washers. Put the black router grommets into this hole. And that one! Fire protection, son! You need it! Set the feed screw with the thrust bearing and the washer and all that stuff into the box. Use four of the M540 bolts to uh, mount the motor into the uh, chassis. Put the second gray motor on the uh, motor mount. Down there. There there we go. Put the hex socket onto uh, the motor shaft. Slide the feed screw into the hex socket. Next step, push the auger down towards the gearbox and make sure that you can have one to two bit, a millimeter travel in the, in the socket like this. Yeah! If you can, that means there's a, a bearing screw up here and you gotta read the instructions and fix it. Remember to take all the uh, housing uh, stuff off, even off the little guys here, yeah! Put two of the laser cut washers on each one of the uh, screw holes, all four of them. Lay the, uh, uh, the this piece on here, there, there we go. When sliding the barrel over the feed screw, I found the easiest way is to actually screw it on! Wow, look at it go! Put the nuts through with the heads on the inside and then a uh, washer and bolt on, the, on all four of them. Some things to note is that I really had to muscle this on, but that's okay. Be sure to check the orientation of the, uh, of the feed here. Also, you want two to, uh, two to ten millimeters uh, sticking out the end here. 
And uh, finally, I left these a little loose for the rest of the enclosure build. I'm also keeping it straight up. That way, there's pressure on the rest of the build on the uh, on the thrust bearing, just like it says in the manual. You gotta read that thing. Push one of the filters onto the nipple. Your snap ring tool and slam that son of a bitch in there. The coupling onto the end. Use some pliers to, type a, to tighten the coupling down onto the uh, the feeder, and then uh, put the nozzle on the coupling. There you go. It's a uh, that's tough, baby. Insert the heating band over the uh, coupling. Keep the wires facing down towards the hole. And also, I had to open this up with the pliers because it was too small to fit. I also had to take off the coupling to do that, so I'm going to put it back on individually. Take the thermal couple and slide it through the hole, and then put it into the. Uh, the little, oop, oop, let's see if we can focus that little hole and put it under the band clamp to secure it all. Then tighten this up. Put the heating rest insulation around the hot end and be sure it's uh, uh, flush with the nozzle. This is going to be a tight fit and you can see it's kind of squeeze in there. After that, secure it with the with this sticky side and close it up nice and tight. Now we're on to the electrical assembly. Estimated time, one hour. Next, open up the package of the uh, the stall resistance board. And then uh, use a standoff and a nut in the set and put it in the two bottom holes uh, there and there. Now use the last two motor mount bolts to hold this whole uh, thing in uh, place with the bolts in. Now uh, take the heat sink and uh, stick it on the MOSFET. For these switches, this is the on position. Take a note of uh, the, the switch placement according to the pins. If we do it this, this is the off position. If you're going to use the stock PID uh, housing, you have to cut off one of the sides, uh, this little arm and the, and the circle, because it's going to interfere with either the bottom or the switches. Here, I'll show you. There you go! Push the buttons into the side clear acrylic panel. Be sure that they're oriented the same way so you don't have buttons that uh, turn on and off in the opposite directions. Also, put the uh, the PID controller through here and be sure the white bracket is uh, lined up. The negative on a barrel jack is the uh, the outer ring here, which connects to... Uh, this wire, I don't know if you can see it, but it has like a little extra ridge on it. See, the other side doesn't. That's nice and smooth. The extra ridge is the negative side, so it's this wire, this out, this one on this side, that connects to the, uh, the round part, which is the negative. So, uh, keep that in mind. This other one's obviously the positive. I mean, that's, you know, you, you just think about it. Feed the barrel jack connector the wires through the, uh, the rear grommet. I don't know if you can see this, but the uh, positive wire from the uh, power jack gets a speed crimp and goes to uh, pin 1 on the uh, main power switch. And the uh, negative on it doesn't get anything. Do not put a crimp on that. That goes to uh, pin 10 on the uh, PID controller. Crimp this together and one goes to uh, pit. the outer pin of switch 1 to the outer pin of switch 2. And then the, the bare wire goes to uh, pin 9 of the PID controller. The, uh, remember the blues are a little bit bigger than the red, so for multiple wires that's what you want to do. Cut and strip a little strip of wire to uh, jump a pin 8 to pin 9 on the pit controller. Now I'm going to cheat here a little bit, don't get mad at me, so the fan housings, uh, the fans come with these connectors. Now according to the instructions, you probably got to cut them off and strip them and connect them up. But what I got off eBay is, uh, well I had them hanging around, is that these little, these little connectors. I don't like cutting wires if I don't have to, so I'm going to plug the connectors into there and then there, use those bare wires to connect those. Not only that, but if you use these things... Make sure that uh, that the, uh, the the wire coloring, uh, you keep track of it, because it actually reverses between the two connectors if you plug them in. So what I'm going to do is uh, pop the wires out of that little guy right there, push them in, pull them out, swap them so that way all the colors line up, and then everything plugs in all nice and dandy. Connect the red extruder fan pin to uh, crimp it together with uh, red wire onto the uh, center pin of uh, switch 2, then run that to the, uh, the, to the positive on the stall board. The, wherever the hell that is, there, yeah, there we go. The motor fan positive and negatives go to the in on the uh, stall board. Cut strip and connect the wire from the uh, in negative on the stall board to pin 10, our friend. The extruder fan black pin uh, also goes to uh, uh, pin 10. A lot of things go to pin 10 because that's the ground. Also, all wires that go into the body go through the grommet, otherwise they're going to get rubbed out and, uh, you know, explode after a while. Strip the heater wires and connect them to pin 7 and pin 10 on the uh, PID. Connect the motor wire power wires to the uh, output of the stall guard. Connect pin 4 to the positive of the thermocouple and pin 3 to the negative of the thermocoupler. So if you could read the plus and uh, my negative signs, that means you gotta flip it upside down. See, you can't read them. You can see the airflow direction of the fans right on the side. The top fan is for the motor. It can blow in or out. I'm gonna do out because so the uh, heat rises. Get it right out of there. The filament cooling fan uh, g uh, cools up. The fan goes up like that. Jam a little bit of PTFE tubing into this little holder. Now it's time to mount the hopper. Put the uh, soda bottle threads towards the nozzle this way. 
Not that way, so just like that, okay? Screw it down! Press fit the nuts into the bottom piece first! Now start fitting the case on! For me, this top piece was actually asymmetrical, it only fit on one way, so be careful there! And also be sure you got all your wires tucked up in there when you put the side case on and then uh, screw it on with your big bolts there! Remember to tighten nuts down! Using this picture as a guide, I used the, uh, zip tied down the, uh, the, the fan track to the barrel. Now they give you two zip ties, I'm assuming one for here, one for here. Let me tell you, they're not gonna go around, so I had to use two of them just for one, and then get, a uh, scrounge up two more to go on the second one. It was like pulling teeth, the hardest thing I've ever done, it won't happen. Now that the build's done, here's all the extra hardware I had. None of this stuff was on the bill of materials. Got eight extra screws. I don't know where the hell to put them. So I'm going to guess that uh, I'm going to double nut the uh, fan so they don't fall off because the, the nuts already seem to be loosening up. I don't know. What the hell? Sure, what the hell? The regular zip ties, no idea what those go for. And these are just seem to be extra. Uh, all right. Next thing you got to do is adjust the stall board. So this one is for volts, this one is for current. That's uh, clamping so you know you can't go over. So what you want is maximum uh, voltage and uh, only a little bit of amps, about an amp and a half total. So what you got to do is uh, uh, turn these things counterclockwise about 800,000 million billion times until you hear a very soft mechanical click. I mean it is really soft. Then uh, turn up the voltage ones about 15 or so because we want to allow full, full voltage flow. Then turn up the uh, current one about, uh, about 5. And uh, the, when you do that, these lights, which would be uh, red and blue, will now turn to green. Green means it's only using about 10% of its load, uh, which is good when, uh, when it's not doing anything, which is where right now it's running, but you know, don't have anything in there. And you can see the amps. Um, there you go, 0.39, so about 10% 10, 10 of the load. Eh, you know, that works. Uh, the red and the blue means it's uh, uh, current clamped, and uh, something else means it's 10% of the current. I don't know. It's in the instructions. But anyway, there you go. To set the temperature, just press these little buttons on the side here all the way up, and then hit, then hit set to set the number. So for PLA, I'm going to go all the way up to uh, 160. Next, what we're going to do is set the uh, PID to auto-tune instead of manual. So what you, you need first, you need to enter the menus to, to switch through all the settings. So we'll hold down set for two seconds. And now we're in the menus, so if you look through the menu, you'll see a list of all this stuff, but we'll keep going until, uh, let's see, until we see control, so... Here we go, now three means uh, manual, so we have, if we adjust this to two, that is the PID auto-tune, so then we'll hit, uh, I think we'll hit this one? Yeah, I think that's good. Uh-oh, why is that thing? I don't know. Anyway... Once that's set, uh, you keep pressing set until you go all the way back. If once you get through the EP one two, there's eight of those. Then after the, the eight one, we'll be back at the uh, main menu here. And uh, there we go. As you can see, it's flashing AT, which is auto tune, and it'll uh, it'll keep flashing this for quite a while. So just let this be, and it'll uh, figure all it, uh, what the hell it's doing, and just come back hours, make sure it doesn't burn down the house, all that good stuff. You know how it goes. When you're auto-tuning, make sure that the, uh, that the fan is on here, because, you know, you want it to auto-tune because, uh, the fan would normally be on when your stuff's coming out. So, there you have it. That's the kit all put together. So, what are my thoughts on it? It's actually a pretty good kit for 300 bucks. Now, you gotta remember that this is a, definitely a DIY kit, so you're gonna need, a you know, a little thinking on the fly, a little finagling here and there, a little muscle to move things around and, and how to deal with stuff. If you're not comfortable with putting this kind of stuff together yourself, I wouldn't try this. You need electrical, mechanical, it's got it all going on here. Uh, and one thing to remember is that the weakest part is probably the manual, which is 80% good and about 20% interpretive dance. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, you know, you got to remember that this machine is competing with other professional machines, which cost 10 times as much. So, in terms of that, hey, I ain't complaining. But next we'll, uh, this is just a build review, and next we'll see how it actually works extruding stuff, and we'll see how it goes from there. Anyway, so far, I really like this kit.